extremely rich in minerals, yet one of the poorest countries in the world, the story of the DRC. Africa is known to be the most endowed continent when it comes to the vast distribution of natural resources in most of the countries in it, especially sub-Saharan countries. According to Global Edge, a global economy information hub, the Democratic Republic of the Congo currently sits on an estimated worth of minerals of 24 trillion US dollars, absolutely staggering. Almost every valuable natural resource can be found in the DRC, from a multitude of minerals, including diamonds, gold, copper, cobalt, cassiterite or tin ore and cotton, to timber and oil. The United Nations report consistently revealed that the DRC also possesses 50% of Africa's forests and a river system that could provide hydroelectric power to the entire continent, showing how much potential it has in its role as an economic power in Central Africa. But what if I told you that the Democratic Republic of the Congo, despite her vast wealth of natural resources and minerals, has consistently tallied the charts of poorest countries, not only in Africa, but the world at large. In fact, Congolese are so poor, more than 80% of Congolese citizens live on less than $1.25 a day, defined as a threshold for extreme poverty by the UN Human Development Index, published in 2019. So what is the reason for this disparity? How can a country be so blessed with natural resources, yet so popular in the poverty journals? In this video, we are telling the story of the DRC, as we present to you our take on the dilemma, actually rich in minerals, yet one of the poorest countries in the world, the story of the DRC. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We put to perspective facts about the Afghan continent from all various aspects of life. Please do subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified on our subsequent videos and feel free to comment. Now let's get straight into this. The Democratic Republic of Congo prior to independence. Now to better understand the sad story of the DRC, with regards to the current demise and countries to their great wealth potential, we'll have to situate the country prior to independence, as that would reveal a background of what the DRC looks like a few years back. The DRC, also known as Congo Kinshasa, DR Congo, or the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or simply either Congo or the Congo, and formerly Zaire, as a country in Central Africa. It is by area the largest country in Sub-Saharan Africa, the second largest in all of Africa after Algeria, and the 11th largest in the world. With a population of around 105 million, the DRC is the most populous officially francophone country in the world, as well as the fourth most populous country in Africa after Nigeria, Ethiopia and Egypt and the 14th most populous country in the world. It is a member of the United Nations, non alignment Movement, Afghan Union and COMESA. Congo achieved independence from Belgium on 30th June 1960 under the name Republic of the Congo. The African history icon Patrice Lumumba was elected the first Prime Minister, while Joseph Kazar Vubu became the first President. During the Congo Crisis, Joseph Desiree Mobutu, who later renamed himself Mobutu Sese Siko, officially came into power through a bloodless coup d'etat and renamed the country Zai in 1971. Now it all mostly begins with this bloody transition of power from the Belgians to Mobutu Sissiko, as his regime was marred with widespread corruption, nepotism and extravagance. But again, the DRC isn't the only African country where corruption is almost constitutional, so looking at the current state of poverty means there's more than meets the eye. Politically speaking, the DRC has been travailing through very poor governance since its independence. In fact, the DRC is extremely rich in natural resources but has suffered from political instability, a lack of infrastructure, corruption and eons of both commercial and colonial extraction and exploitation with little development. Political Instability in Perspective It is factual that a country which suffers from political instability definitely suffers economically. The DRC being wrecked from years of wars and political upheaval is one of the most significant causes of poverty in the DRC, while poverty and youth unemployment has ignited conflicts. The Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC was very poor before the most recent outbreak of the civil war in the 1990s. According to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the data is sparse, but nevertheless it has concluded that armed conflicts have caused a deterioration in living standards in most of the provinces. Since World War II, the war over raw materials in the Congo kills an estimated 10,000 civilians on a monthly basis, and as such, the raw materials are available but are not exploited by the country peacefully. The precious metals mined in the Congo are used in the manufacturing of smartphones, light bulbs, 
computers and jewelry. The corruption in the mining industry has become a lucrative trade for militia groups, who before 2010 generated yearly revenues estimated around $185 million indirectly from foreign investors. Although the passage of the Dodd-Frank Act in the USA substantially reduced the market for illegal minerals, and the majority of mines are now under civilian control and military groups who continue to fund themselves from gold mining, things have not changed much. And to think that the government officials are intermingled with this barbaric act is just sickening. There are even foreign companies investing in the armed groups in militia that control mineral resources, which have resulted in the loss of over $1 billion in tax revenue over the last 10 years. In addition, the Congolese government's awarding of mine assets to foreign countries at one sixth their value have cost the Congolese people about $1.35 billion. Ridiculous economic and constitutional policies. It is proven from international standards that the government of the DRC has a major role in the grievous downturn to the country's economy since the 90s. For instance, how can one explain that in 2001, upon his ascension to power, President Joseph Kabila established the Commission of Repression of Economic Crimes? Like where does that even happen? In 2006, Transparency International ranked the Democratic Republic of the Congo 156 out of 163 countries in the Corruption Perception Index tying Bangladesh, Chad and Sudan with a 2.0 rating. The economic and constitutional policies agreed by top ranking officials are simply ridiculous, serving to cover up for heavy embezzlements. It is sad to think that for a country blessed with all sorts of natural resources, agriculture remains the mainstay of the economy, accounting for 57.9% of GDP since 1997. In fact, the previous year, agriculture employed 66% of the workforce. There is a serious mafia going on within the government in economic reforms in the country. During the last decade, the conflicts in the DRC have been over water, minerals and other resources. Political agendas have worsened the economy, as in times of crisis the elite benefit while the general populace suffer. This is worsened as a result of corrupt national and international corporations. The corporations instigate and allow the fighting for resources because they benefit from it. This is why the DRC is consistently rated the lowest on the UN Human Development Index. The influence of the informal sector As strange as it may sound, much economic activity occurs in the informal sector and is reflected in GDP data, and this goes unchecked by government. As a result, there is bound to be a consistent leakage in the economy of the country. For instance, the Democratic Republic of the Congo possesses 50% of Africa's forest and a river system that could provide hydroelectric parts of the entire continent, as aforementioned, according to the United Nations report on the country's strategic significance and its potential role as an economic power in Central Africa. But did you know that the economic activity in this sector is mostly run informally? So the country's coffers suffer a great deal. Just 5,000 tons of fish are reported to be harnessed from the marine river and lake fisheries, which have a capacity of 222,965 tons. So looking at this disparity, it doesn't add up at all. Forests cover 60% of the total land area, and yet there are vast timber resources and commercial development of the country's 61 million hectares of exploitable wooden area is only beginning. And then forests in this area are nearly depleted. Conclusion If we base on the natural resources and vast mineral deposits in the DRC, which can be exploited fully and generate a wealth of more than $24 trillion, then the DRC would be one of the richest countries in Africa. But due to political instability, poor economic reforms, prevalent informal sectors, and unchecked corruption, the DRC are going about in circles in their poor situation. But things could always change for the better. What do you think? Let us know what you think can be done to turn things around for this nation. Thanks for watching this Please be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications and share with your friends.